welcome. I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore, and I'm excited to introduce another lesson of Back to the Basics in part one of this two-part segment called The Power of Your Words. And in this lesson, we're going to see from Scripture how powerful our words really are. Uh, you know, the, the tongue is a, is a powerful instrument. It's capable of being used to create or even to destroy. And the Bible talks about the words we speak set into motion life or death, blessing or cursing. It also gives reference to, the Bible also gives reference to how the words that we speak contain the power to determine the outcome of every situation in our lives. Every situation in our lives. And so, I think, I mean, to be honest with you, I think that's really, really interesting. So, tonight, let's get right into this lesson by looking at the creative power of the spoken word. And we're going to begin in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then in verse 3, we said, then God said. What does that mean? God said. He declared. He spoke. Let there be light. And there was light. Notice as we drop down to verse 6, it says, then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heaven from the waters of the earth. And then we drop down to verse 9 in Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so that dry ground may appear. And notice what it says. And this is what happened. Verse 11 says, Then God said, again we see the spoken word of God, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort, of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit, these seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And notice what it says. And this is what happened. Verse 14 says, Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and the earth. And we know that this occurred because if we walk outdoors at any time, day or night, we can see the effect of God's word coming to pass. And then we drop down to verse 24 in Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> then verse 24 says, Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And notice this, and that is what happened. That's what happened. God spoke it, and it came to pass. So when God's word is spoken, we know that, that the Bible tells us that all creation must obey. This includes principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness. However, with that said, let me make this statement as well. Human beings are the only ones with the choice as whether to obey or not. God gave us a free will, and that means that we have the right of choice. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 declares that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. When we look at the Greek word here for framed, the, that the worlds were framed, the Greek word means to, in the Greek it means to arrange, set in order, to equip, to adjust, to complete what is lacking, and to make fully ready. It can also mean to repair or to prepare. See, God used His words to arrange he used his words to set things in order. He used his words to equip and to adjust. And he used his words to complete what he saw, what was lacking in the universe at that point in time. He used his words to prepare and to make things fully ready and to repair what was broken. Now, 
Well, again, in this particular passage of Scripture, when we look at the next word, which is word, the worlds were framed by the word of God. In, in, in the Greek, there are two words that are used to define our one word, word. We have logos, or logos, which is the written word in its entirety, or we have the Greek word rhema. Rhema is the spoken word that creates, and in this passage of Scripture, that of, of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, we see this particular Greek word rhema being used. So this Scripture is telling us that God used His words, His words to create. Now remember we just saw back in Genesis chapter 1 how God spoke His word, and what He spoke happened. And so God uses his spoken word to create and to bring something into existence. Notice with me Psalms chapter 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Did you know that God gave you and I that same ability that he has? That same ability to create with our words, God gave that to us. See, God commands us to create with His spoken word or our, our word as well. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17 tells us, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, and in the presence of Him whom He believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Notice, he calls those things that did not exist as though they already had. Now, when we look at, at this particular um, word, calls, in the Greek it means to call out loud, or it means to speak out loud. So when he calls those things into existence, he's speaking with his mouth. He's declaring out loud those things. And this tells us in, within this particular passage of Scripture uh, that that voice was given to what they believed because they believed it, then they declared it by speaking or declaring God's word out loud. Out loud. See, our words have creative power. Our words, uh, when spoken, just like God, things happen and come to pass. And so by doing this, by doing this, we can see that they, well, they were what we might call being an imitator of God. They were imitating their heavenly Father. Did you know, did you know that being an imitator of God is scriptural? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, tells us that therefore, well, it says, imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are His dear children. Another translation says, be imitators, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. What's an imitator? What's an imitator? Well, the dictionary defines an imitator as a person who copies the behaviors or actions of of another. We might say it more like this. They're copycats. Copycats. They're copycats. And if we are to copy the behaviors of God, you know, we've just found out that His Word has creative power, and if He uses His words to create, and we're supposed to be a copycat or an imitator, then we can use our words to create as well. And so, in other words, we could say it like this. We can have what we say. We can have what we say. And the Bible clearly talks about, on many occasions, the importance of our words and how we can have what we say if we believe it in our hearts. Let's look at a few of these scriptures that highlight that point uh, within this study. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it, the Bible tells us that if we openly declare that Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. For it is by believing in our heart that we are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring our faith that we are saved. 
that we are saved. And the scripture tells us if we declare, if we declare, the word declare implies that we are to proclaim or announce or to say what we believe out loud that's already in our hearts. That's already in our hearts. Now, the dictionary, the dictionary, the, the dictionary clearly defines um, declare as to say something in a solemn and clear manner. To, de to declare means to say something, again, vocally, we're, de we're saying something in a uh, clear manner or a solemn manner. We might say something like this, uh, that we're making a confession of our faith, we're making a declaration, we're declaring, we're saying something in a clear manner. So let's look at another passage of Scripture that confirms this point. Mark 11, chapter uh, 23 says, For assuredly I say unto you, say unto this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen, but you must really believe it, and it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. What are we saying? What's in your heart, you speak. And again, we see the very same principle we just looked at in Romans. Notice the power of the spoken word is being highlighted again in this scripture, except it's not being used just for salvation, but for whatever you need. We use our voice. We use our voice to speak, as the Bible says here, to the mountain, to the mountain in our lives. What is that mountain? What is that mountain in our lives? Well, a mountain could be a large obstacle. It could be a hindrance. It could be sickness. It could be financial. It could be whatever is a hindrance to us. The Bible says we are to declare it, or whatever has power over us, we are to declare with our mouth for it to be removed. And as we do... Those things that are hindering in our journey in life must obey. The Bible says that, that, that things in heaven of things in earth and things beneath the earth must bow their knee to that name of Jesus. So as we declare God's word openly, it must obey. And truth be told, you know, no one ever really wants to go over the mountain because we all prefer to go the easy way, and that's around the mountain. And it's important for us to understand that our mountain needs to hear our voice. You see, if, if you do not have the faith to move your voice and speak God's word to your mountain, you're not going to have faith to move your mountain. In Mark chapter 17 and verse 20 it says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say unto you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say, notice the word, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. Oh, don't you know it's so impossible? You can't move a mountain. The word of God says nothing will be impossible to you. Notice Jesus said we must speak it and then we believe it. We speak and we believe. This is our peace. This is what we do. And so often we get so buried into in God's responsibility, but you know, he didn't say you do it. He said you speak it and it comes to pass. You believe it and it comes to pass. And and as we speak in line with God's word and speak God's word, the Holy Spirit will bring all and everything to pass. We know that because Psalms chapter 33 and verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. When we see this word breath in the, in the Hebrew, it means by resemblance of the Holy Spirit, including the, its expressions and functions. And so remember we looked at the very beginning of our study in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 that the earth was, was, was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. You see, the, the Holy Spirit works with us to produce the greatest result of the Word of God in our life as we speak and declare His Word into existence. And we do this by declaring His promises by speaking his word. Now here's another cool fun fact about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also reminds us of what to speak. 
And this is such a cool, what I think a really cool thing about the Holy Spirit is that, that, that he'll work with us and remind us what to speak as well. Look with me at John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, for whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He's going to remind us. If we have it, if, if we put it on the inside of us, he'll remind us that it's there. And I can't tell you how many times, man, I've forgotten scriptures, don't even know that it's still out there, but, you know, and I'll be praying and the Lord will, and the Holy Spirit will bring that to remembrance. And, you know, that's the message, that's the scripture for that moment. So how important is our words? How important are our words? I think Jesus summed it up best when he said in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. What Jesus said is whatever is in your heart will always make an entrance into your world through your words. So let me encourage you. Be an imitator of God. In other words, be a person who copies the behaviors or actions of our Father God. And what we found within this study is that God used His words to create. Let's do the same thing. Let's use our words to create the reality in which we want to live in. This concludes this lesson on words for this segment of Back to the Basics. I'm Michael Pilmore. And thanks for watching.